Hi everybody, happy Friday, and welcome to another edition of our Friday Live Q&A. Hopefully we'll have some friends join us. Um, hopping in a little bit early today because it is the last day that our second daughter is home, so we've got some things to do later today, and it's back to school season, right? So I'm gonna start as usual with a few announcements, and then I'll get into the topic of today. We're gonna be discussing shin splints and what you can do to avoid them. If you're hopping in live, please say hi so I can tell who's here. And as always, it can be interactive. Sorry, a phone call coming in. If you catch this on a replay, go ahead and just comment replay below so I can tell who's watching. We are always open to questions. So whether or not you, at, you know, share them directly in the group or you send them to us by way of messenger, it is our hope to provide valuable information here that you guys are hoping to learn. So we make stuff up if we don't hear from you guys. <laughs> and um, But just know that you're always welcome to ask questions. So without further ado, upcoming events here at Fit for Life. Most of you guys in this group should be on my email list. If you're not, you, you want to be because I do send out about about once a week, not not every Tuesday, but about every week on Tuesday, I send out important updates. So if you're not on my email list, would you um, send me a message with your email address so that I can put you on that? The most recent email this week shared a lot of these upcoming details. So our next in-person in our office live event is going to be a Q&A with our health coaches, Allison Dondorfer and Sharice Goodrich. It's gonna be a Q and A. So you you should come prepared to ask a health coach your questions. We'll have some you know prompts ready, but they're gonna basically just be at your disposal to answer any burning question that you might've ever wanted to ask a health coach. That will be August 27th from seven to 8 p.m. at our office. Please RSVP to let us know you're coming. I think we have eight people RSVP'd already. The important, piece about coming to this class is that for those of you that do come, I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit about hormones, particularly the pre, peri, and postmenopausal changes and hormones and things that happen to us females. If you come to that free class, you're going to be eligible for a $30 discount on our very first time ever offered six-week class or course that we are hosting. It'll be a paid course. Uh, it's gonna start September 12th and run on six consecutive Tuesdays. If for some reason you can't make it every week, we will record it, but it's going to be geared towards um, that exact topic of reclaiming your life. And we're hoping to teach some new and, and helpful tips and information for you, those of you and myself included that are navigating the season of changing hormones and stress and weight gain and frustration and brain fog and insomnia and what else. <laughs> so that's why we're really hoping that you will come to the free class. You're going to get a discount on that course. And that course is going to be co-taught by Raven and Spa and Sharice Goodrich. So it'll be the two of them collaborating to give you a really, really valuable six week course. That's number one. Um, we have a couple other community events that we're doing that I talked about. I've shared a little bit in this group. We're sponsoring the 4-H 5K run Labor Day weekend, which unfortunately we are not able to physically attend due to family things, but uh, Fit for Life is a sponsor. So if you're looking for something fun to do that weekend, we are sponsoring that race. Uh, what else? We're gonna be participating in the Lake County YMCA Health Fair upcoming September 7th from nine to one. This is all from memory. <laughs> uh, so the community is invited to come for back to school health, free health screenings and we'll be present um, doing our like total body diagnostics. Raven and I will both be there. So um, please feel free to bring friends and come to that. Oh, hi, Margie, Margie hopped on. First, we're starting with updates first, Margie, and then I'll get into teaching a little bit. 
Uh, I heard from Joy this week and Joy Semino, our functional or our um, personal trainer is going to be releasing her information very soon. She's going to host her second um, balance class that'll be coming up, I think the very first week of September. So I'm holding her accountable to getting that information out. There were several of you in here that participated in that last time she had it. This will be a, the next level class. And as just a reminder, all of our partners in health, our personal trainer, massage therapist, and health coaches are currently seeing patients and accepting new clients at Fit for Life. So they all have their own private information for contacting and scheduling. So you can find our information all pinned at the top of this group. I think that's all for the updates that I have for now. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about shin splints. This is the time of year for our high school athletes in back to school and fall sports where the work that you did or did not do perhaps could come to, to bite you in the shins, basically. Shin splints are, that can be a frustrating sidelining injury. They are more common in younger runners, but more advanced runners can get them for a couple of different reasons. So a few things that I like to talk about first. They're also not just, they don't just occur in runners. So this is, they can be in soccer players and any other basketball players, athletes that run basically, especially if they're on a very hard surface. There are some risk factors for why people might get shin splints. You're, if you do too much too fast, it can put you at an increased risk, meaning if you increase your weekly mileage too much, that's one reason you can develop a shin splint. The other reason would be if you didn't run enough during, let's say, your summer when you should have been building your base, and then you try to jump into the fast speed workouts that your coach is asking you to do, that can be a cause of the shin splint pain as well. Your foot type matters. Shin splints can occur in high arched or flat footed individuals. There's some thought that the type of shoe that you wear is important. So you're gonna want to make sure you're in the right footwear for your foot type. I believe that your foot control and the strength of your feet muscles matters. So that's maybe a little bit more important than your type of foot type if you have good foot control. If you run on hard surfaces all the time, like cement, uh, certainly if you're like the indoor track athletes who run around inside the schools, your increased risk of getting shin splints, those high school kids do that in the winter, it, it's, it drives me crazy. So a, a harder surface um, and a, or a real rigid shoe, like I guess military, uh, members have an increased risk because they're in those boots and hard surfaces and very rigid shoes. So those are some of the reasons why you might get shin splints. What is it actually? What is the shin splint? The t um, medical term for it is medial tibial stress syndrome. What that basically means is they're the muscles that run down the inside of your shin that attach to the front of that bone in the front of your le lower leg is called the tibia. And they get stressed and strained and they pull on the bone actually. And so if you look at it on x-ray when that's starting to happen, the bone that's supposed to be really nice and crisp and white and clear kind of gets uh, foggy or, or splayed, spread out. So, and it is, it's an overuse injury. The posterior tibialis muscle is the muscle that is the one that gets irritated and it runs right behind that shin, behind that medial ankle bone and then into the arch of your foot. So it is an itis, it's an overuse injury of that posterior tib, but it actually, if left untreated, can become a stress reaction or a stress fracture, which is going to really sideline you. So you want to try to avoid that. So what can you do to avoid shin splints? The most important thing you could do is if you're a, if you're a, a fall athlete or if you're a spring athlete, the most important thing you can do is the season leading up to your sport is do the work that you need to do and put the mileage in and safely progress your mileage. 10% increased mileage 
or and or intensity is the safe uh, equation basically so you want to not do too much too fast you want to have built your base over the summer or in the season leading up to your sport and then you you, you should be able to tolerate the increasing load and demand that your coach is going to ask of you when the season starts so if you didn't run well if you didn't train well for your sport then you need to be honest about that with your coach so that they can appropriately grade what you're doing because if you don't communicate that you're not adequately prepared they don't modify your exercises and then you're gonna end up hurting and it's gonna impact your season. So communicate with your coach. You don't wanna to do too much too fast. So if you're in that situation, then a smart coach is gonna do a little bit work on the mileage base building first before they ask you to do the shorter, faster stuff. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in the right equipment. So. If you're a runner, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in a good running shoe. If you're in another sport, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're in the appropriate footwear for that sport. If you're a local to the Concord area, there are a couple great running stores. There's Achilles and Second Soul in the Menor area. Fleet Feet is another good one. They actually do like a, a personalized assessment of your foot to decide which shoe you should be in. They're not quite as local. You gotta drive a little bit, might be Solon. Uh, I can't remember where Fleet Feet is at, but that's another good one. And so you're going to want to make sure that you're in the right equipment and shoes is one of that. So get yourself to a shoe store and make sure you're in good shoes. The other thing that you're going to want to do is make sure you stretch your calves, which is the, the back part of the lower leg because calves tend to be tight. Another big issue that we see is um, patient people who are not as strong on the front side of their body, so for particularly the lower leg the anterior tib or the that little muscle on the front of the tibia doesn't get strengthened as much as the, that calf that is super strong in the back so for many many of our runners we focus on strengthening the anterior tib or the, the front muscle on the front of the lower leg you're going to want to learn about running posture and running form because if your form is not ideal like let's say you're an over strider you're putting uneven forces through your body as you sustain very high loads for that run. So you're gonna to wanna to work on your running form and you're gonna to wanna to learn how posture, how your posture relates to that. For those of you that are interested, there's a very good book that we read this summer called Running Rewired. And myself and Raven and actually Dr. Sobchak and uh, Dr. Josh, his son took a very brand new approach to our injury prevention screens to Chardon High School runners, uh, the cross country boys team in particular this summer to screen them in a, an entirely new way that focuses on posture and form. And so for those of you interested in learning, it's called Running Rewired and it's by Jay, I think it's Dickery or Dickery, Dickery maybe, D-I-C-H-A-R-R-Y. He's a PT and it's an excellent book for becoming a student of your sport basically. So learn about your foot posture and your foot control and your posture in general and your running form. And last but not least, I would say get an injury prevention screen. It has become a very valuable thing for our um, running community. But I would say this could be extended to uh, all athletes basically. And at Fit for Life, we are we have regularly gone out into the community to bring this to teams, but we very recently decided that it was valuable enough that we were gonna leave space during our week to, to do five injury prevention screens for our local community per week in the office. And that is a completely free service. It'll take about 20 minutes of your time we're gonna look at you from head to toe, put you through some very specific movement tests, and then share with you the things that we find that will specifically set you up for success should you do them. And conversely, might be warning signs of injury risk if left untreated. So those appointments are, will be available as early as next week. If you or your loved one or your student athlete does not just have to be a runner, is interested in a free injury screen, just call the office and Jenna will set you up with that. Both Raven and myself are able to complete the screens. I will also share a blog post that I wrote a couple years ago on keeping your shins and feet healthy. That can be found on our website, but I'll put it right below this video for just a little bit more information about 
what we're talking about today. I think that's all I have for now. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any specific questions about what we talked about, comment below. And thank you for trusting us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you that have started to share the referral program cards. We got most of those out over the last week or two to patients. If we forgot you, uh, get them. Let us know the next time you're in the office. But that referral program is is now ongoing and retroactive for the for the past year for patients that have referred patients to us. Jenna actually is going to be making some phone calls to patients who may not know that we rolled this out because if you sent someone to us this year and they came, um, even though they might not have gotten the discount on their first session, we're going to give you the credit to you for your services. And so it's a $94 credit. It's a $94 gift certificate, basically, the referral cards for who the person that you refer to see us for their initial session. If they choose to invest in their health and become a patient for even just a few sessions, you will get $25 of a credit yourself to be used however you see fit uh, on um, your, your services. One $25 per person. Um, not time they come, but one twenty-five dollars per person. So you have an opportunity to get a um, hundred dollars off if you refer five people, and and also half off basically one of your sessions. So thank you for those of you that are already doing that, and thank you to those of you that are going to do it. And we are blessed to be your go-to providers for physical therapy. And I will see you guys next Friday. Have a good weekend, everybody.